Hello everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, So Little Time, and my name is Karen. So I hope you're all doing really well and thank you very much for joining me today. Today's video is going to be all about my dress that I made for the Dressmakers Ball, which took place last weekend at the City Rooms in Leicester, and that was organised by the lovely ladies at Crafty So and So. I had an absolutely marvellous time, really, really enjoyed it, and I'm so glad that we have this event in our calendar, and I'm really fortunate to have it on my doorstep as well, so I don't actually have to travel too far. So before I get stuck into this video then, I firstly just want to say apologies that I'm not wearing anything me made today. I am in my running gear. I've just come back from a run, so I'm not looking my most glamorous. Um, I haven't even had a shower yet. <laughs> I just sorted my fringe out. Um, yeah, because I'm in training for the Leicester Half Marathon at the moment, which is taking place at the end of October. So I want to say thank you very much to those of you who have sponsored me. If you would like to sponsor me, I am raising money for Loros Charity, which is a charity based in Leicester. So it, again, it's a local charity to me and they look after patients who are suffering with cancer. And they also look after the families as well, which is just really lovely. They are a really, really lovely charity. Um, so I've raised the money for them and I have got a Just Giving page. So if you did want to sponsor me, I will link that in the description box below for you. Absolutely no pressure whatsoever. It's, I'm just putting it out there in case you did want to sponsor me. So I'm hoping to be able to run it a little bit quicker this year than I did last year. I'm a stone less in weight. And also um, I'm hoping that the weather will be a bit more on my side this year because last year it was torrential rain the whole way round near enough. Um, so hopefully it will be dry. So yeah, I'm in the middle of my training at the moment. I have to say, I'm still a struggling runner. I'm never gonna be one of those people that finds it very comfortable. Even back in the day when I used to run a lot more regularly than I do now, um, yeah, it still has always been a struggle. I'm just not a natural runner. I have to work at it basically. So yeah, that's that. Anyway, so with regards to the Dressmakers Ball then, so like I say, the ladies at Crafty So-and-So organise it and it's um, been a bit later sort of in the calendar this time around due to COVID and other restrictions that were in place. So I think initially it was run like every other year, not every year, but I think everybody's saying they want it back next year because it was such a success again. It was a really, really lovely evening. Now I had Angela from Devon Thread Tales come up for the weekend and stop with me, which was such a treat because we have gotten to know each other really well over the past few years and have made such good friends. Um, and it's just amazing to think that I would never have, would have met her if it wasn't for the sewing community and social media. So it's just amazing that this uh, community that we've got brings us all together just for our love of sewing and it's just amazing. So yeah, that was really, really nice. Now she popped up on the Friday um, and the ball was on the Saturday. So we did the part run with my son, Harry, on uh, the Saturday morning. So that set us off in good stead for our day out. And then Simon took the boys out uh, for the day. So we went into town and just did a little bit of shopping just to get a few last minute bits for our um, getting ready for the ball, I suppose. And I just did some trying on and stuff like that. So yeah, and had a lovely lunch out and then got back and started getting ready. So I'm gonna be talking to you all about my ball gown then. As you can see, it's in the background here. Well, I say it's a gown. It's not a gown, is it? It's more of a cocktail dress, I would call it. And I use the Daria pattern making Rose Cafe bustier dress. So I just actually used the bodice of that dress to create my version of it, because that actually comes with a bit more of a pencil skirt style. And that is not really something that I wear. Um, I do prefer a bit more of a girly girl dress, so I've added a gathered skirt onto it. So I will get it down in a moment. I won't be trying it on for you today. I will probably do that in a makes video further down the line because I think I've got enough um, pictures and videos to add into this video so you can see the dress in its full glory. But I am over the moon with how it turned out. Now, if you watched my previous video on my plans for the dressmaker's ball and making this dress, you will know that I had quite the debacle with the fitting process. And I am really glad that I spent that time um, fitting the bodice because it is quite a tricky uh, fit to get right, I think, because especially for me, I have never made any underwear or bras or any sort of corset style tops. So for me, this was completely new in going down this kind of avenue of dressmaking. Um, and I have to say, I really did enjoy the process of it and I learned a lot. And I also learned a little bit more about my body as well. So as you know, I made four twirls of the bodice and I really am glad that I went to the trouble of doing that because I got the best fit that I could for me. However, what I will say is that even now I could tweak the fit even more to get it right for me. And if I make it again, I know where I would make those changes to get the fit better. But I just went with like 
what I could um, and got the best fit for me this time around using the fabric that I've got. So the fabric that I have made it in, I got from Minerva. So the base of it um, is a satin backed, no, a crepe backed satin fabric, which I got from Minerva and they gifted me that in return for a blog post. So there will be a blog post going up all about this dress and I hope to get better photos of me wearing it, maybe in the garden when it's not so windy. It's really windy at the minute. Um, and then the lace overlay fabric I got from Minerva as well, but I bought that separately. So um, it was really just fortunate that when the fabrics turned up, they matched perfectly. So I'm really, really happy with that. It's such a beautiful lace fabric that is, I'm just over the moon with it. Um, yeah, so the fit then. Uh, when I was making it up, I was using some fabric that I'd already got in my stash that I'd had from Felicity Fabrics, which is a cotton PK fabric. So it has got good stability, which was perfect for twirling the bodice. And I had a day at Crafty So and So where I made a couple of bodices and had Sarah help me pin me in um, just to get sort of the fit right on the bodice. So I went from a size 10 down to a size 8 to get the bodice itself right and that fits absolutely perfect the fitting of the cups i had a lot more difficulty with um and what i have realized is that my breasts are fairly close together so i don't have much of a gap in between them so whenever i wear like a bra or low cut top i would always have that line so i have that cleavage line it doesn't matter what size my my boobs kind of are i will always have that because they are quite close together and as a standard i used to wear a 34c bra and I usually wear a balconette type bra because I just find that suits my breast shape the most and that's not too dissimilar actually to the shape of these cups um but when I was going through the fitting process I found that they were a little bit wider than my normal bra shape of the cup um so I did unpick one of my bras um to try and use the cups but it just really didn't work out very well so I just went with how the pattern pieces were and I ended up making a d cup and I knew that I wanted to add in some underwire just to give me that little bit more sort of stability um, and maybe just to hold the shape a lot better of the cups. And that worked really well. Now I did try adding in foam cups, which didn't work for me. It made the bodice stand proud away from me. So that didn't work. And I think it is because um, I have a bust, so I didn't need that extra padding. Um, whereas I did need the underwire just to bring it into the center of my breastbone more because obviously like I said I'm quite close together so that worked really well so you actually sew in the um, channeling to put the underwire in afterwards so what you basically do is you actually sew up the bodice itself first and line that and then you do the same with the cups you, you make the cups separately and then line those as well but obviously because I was having a lace overlay I had to cut out the um, lace fabric and then I had to cut out the um, crepe backed satin. And then I had to cut out the lining fabric as well. So I cut out three bodices basically for both the bodice section and the cups. And then I had to baste the lining, sort of not, sorry, not the lining. I had to baste the um, lace on top of my gold fabric basically, um, and then treat those as one piece. So that is what I did and that worked really well. Um, now the fabric I use for lining, wasn't sort of the best I suppose I think I used some cotton that I got left over again from Felicity Fabrics um and I just wanted to use what I'd got basically but I think in hindsight if I make this again I would use maybe a cotton poplin which is a little bit lighter weight than the cotton that I've used or maybe something with a little bit more slip on it maybe yeah maybe just like a lining fabric or something like that but it was stable enough to work with and it, it has worked absolutely fine but I think it's it's added quite a little bit of bulk onto my cup area so I'm going to get the dress down just so I can show you um, a little bit easier about what I'm talking about so here is the bodice section of the dress now I just used for the straps um just the gold fabric. I didn't want to add the lace overlay on top of that. I just found that that would have been a little bit too difficult for me to do. Um, and because I ended up wearing my normal bra underneath, I didn't want to just use the lace fabric alone because otherwise you would have seen my bra straps. So I made sure that um, these were wide enough to cover my bra straps and that worked absolutely fine. So the cups then, if I try and bring this in a little bit closer, the way these are inserted into the bodice, you do it after you've constructed the bodice pieces because like I say, you line that fully and then you actually sew them in from, basically you put them in from the back um, and then you top stitch them in. 
and you already will have added the channel in for the uh, underwire to go in onto the cups itself. So you do have um, where you need to like top stitch them into place firstly, and then when you've got the underwire channeling on the other side, you then top stitch again on the very edge of that. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so it is quite a fiddle to get those in, but they're in, I'm happy with them. It took me four attempts to get them in. So I was at one point thinking, oh, I'm going to have to redo the whole of these cups in this bodice because of unpicking it three times. I thought I was just messing about with the fabric, but I'm really happy to say that although this is a lace fabric, it actually is quite robust because it withstood all the unpicking that I did. Um, I do think, I think it's on this cup that I have stretched this out slightly at the top um, because it stood proud a little bit, which was a bit annoying. Obviously I've gone through all that fitting process and then that one was standing slightly proud on me. And I think it was because I'd unpicked it that many times that I must have stretched it out, even though I'd added some interfacing to prevent that from stretching out. Um, I think it was just overhandled at the end of the day. Um, but again, like I say, I have learned a lot. So the tweaks I would do next time is perhaps to take a little section just out of this top part of the cup, just so that it um, is slightly more sort of towards my chest area because I am quite hollow at the top and I have got sort of teardrop shaped breasts. I mean, I can't believe I'm describing my shape of my breast to you right now, but you know what I mean? I haven't got a rounded top half of my, of my chest area. Um, but yeah, so as you can see here is the lining that I've used and it is just a cotton lining. I mean, it really does not go, I don't think. Um, but I just wanted to use what I've got. Um, so yeah, I used up some fabric that I'd already got. So the, the actual bodice itself, that worked out absolutely fine. And then I've got this gathered skirt on the bottom of it. Um, the gathering, I tried to do initially by um, just doing three rows of gathering stitches and then obviously pulling those. But because what I ended up doing is creating a skirt which doesn't have any side seams. So it was quite a lot of fabric to gather together. And I measured out my skirt to be 76 inches wide by 26 inches in depth. Um, so I measured like another skirt on a dress to sort of see where I needed it to fall on me. And that worked out about 26 inches. So it's 76 inches wide and I had all that to gather into place. Um, and then I spoke with Angela and I was like, this gathering is not working. I keep snapping my threads. What shall I do? And she said, well, she uses top stitching thread doubled over and then she zigzags over the top and then just pulls that. And that worked like a dream. So I am going to do that every time I do gathering now because it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And it got the gathers all nicely even, not so even on the back. Um, I think I've got a bit more gather this side than I have that side. But do you know what? Whatever. <laughs> um, now, like I said, the cups took four attempts to get in. So once I got them in on the fourth go, I was like, they're in. Oh my goodness, thank goodness I can now get on with the skirt. And I spent the whole of the week leading up to the ball sewing this dress. I had a bad back by the end of it being hunched over my sewing machine. Um, I think I finished it Thursday morning um, and I was then anticipating whether I should make a bag to go with it on Thursday night, but I was so tired. I was like, I don't want to do any more sewing. It's becoming a chore. So yeah, I didn't in the end. Um, so then the next thing to do was to insert the zip. Oh my goodness. And I was thinking, how am I going to do this? Because obviously it's lace and I bought an invisible zip. So unfortunately I haven't got it invisible. As you can see, it is visible here. Not so much on the skirt because that kind of gathers over it. It's just mainly on the bodice section here. So I have still used the invisible zip, but what I ended up doing was using just the standard zip foot. So that worked um, absolutely fine because I tried inserting the zip to make it invisible and my invisible zip foot works really well on my machine to the point that it does make my zips invisible, but it was so close, it was catching on the lace. And so I was worried that I was going to rip it. And that was obviously the last thing that I wanted to happen. So again, I think that took me about four goes for the zip as well. Honestly, by the end of it, my fingers were hurting. I've got dry hands from handling the fabric so much during the week and they were sore from all the unpicking 
And then what did I go and do on Thursday night? Burn my fingers. Yeah, so they were really sore as well. <laughs> did this me. Burnt them on the pan. Anyway, so I sat eating my, <laughs> eating my dinner with my hands in a bowl of ice. Oh, yeah. So the skirt went in absolutely fine with that gathering process. The zip went in fine once I'd used just a regular zip foot using just installing it as you would a normal invisible zip, but using the normal zip foot, that worked fine. And I thought it's gonna be on show. There's not a lot I can do about it, but at least the color was pretty similar. And you know, if you just put a standard zip in, it would be showing, wouldn't it? So yeah. Um, then the skirt itself, um, where I've done it as 26 inches, I left the actual hem of the skirt it's got, obviously on the lace, it's got the scalloped edge, scalloped, scalloped edge. I don't know how you say it, I suppose. It depends where you come from. Um, and then for the underskirt, I wanted to make it just slightly shorter so that that scalloped lace edge was showing a little bit more. So what I did at the bottom of the um, this skirt, I have used some bias binding, which was actually... Um, a satin bias binding, just again what I'd already got in my stash, so I just used that and um, so I turned it up just very very slightly. So that worked really well as well. So overall I'm so so happy with how that has turned out. Um, like I say, I did have that little bit of gaping on that side, so what I ended up doing was pinning it to my bra. Now I know this has got underwiring, my bra has got underwiring, but it just fitted perfectly over my bra and I do need that extra support. I don't feel comfortable in a dress without a bra on, whether it's got underwires in or not. I just need that support. And so it fitted really nicely over my bra um, and I'd been obviously testing the fit over it, but obviously where I'd have stretched that bit out, I just had to pin that to my bra to stop it poking out because I didn't want to sit down and like lean forward and people be able to see my bra underneath because um, I couldn't get a skin coloured bra in the type of bra that I like. I had to have white. So, yeah. Um, but I am just over the moon with how this has turned out. I haven't put it away yet. I've had it sort of on my wall, sort of hung up on my wardrobe in my bedroom so I can keep looking at it because the reason I went for a more of a cocktail style dress this time around is because I wanted to be able to wear it again. And I do think that this dress will be suitable for wearing to a wedding. Now, I've got two weddings coming up over the next two years. So next year, one of my cousins gets married and then the year after that, my other cousin gets married as well. So I'm hoping that I'll still fit in this dress and that I can wear that to the weddings, which would be lovely. Um, and then I, obviously I was thinking, shall I make a bag to go with it? Because I did have some of this lace fabric left and also the crepe um, backed satin as well. So I thought I could make a bag, but uh, it was just, running out of time and I didn't want to put pressure on myself so I thought no I'm not going to. So I basically wore this with this clear necklace that I had from Marks and Spencers um, quite a while ago. I think my mum bought it for me for Christmas one year. So that and then I wore it with this fluffy little cardigan because I didn't really have anything else that was going to go with it um, and this was from the charity shop which I actually wore to the ball the first time that I went in 2019. So I thought actually that went really nicely over the top. Um, and like I say, that was originally from Monsoon and I got that from the charity shop. And then I'd already bought these gold sparkly shoes, again, from the charity shop, um, which I just thought, perfect match. You know, I was really pleased with that. And they wore really well, because these are a six and a half. So they're just slightly a bit bigger than my normal size six. Um, so they were quite comfy. So I did have sore toes at the end of the night from all the dancing. Um, but yeah, overall, they were comfortable, you know, and I don't wear heels very often anymore because I don't work. Um, whereas at work, I used to wear heels all the time. And now, you know, just in trainers, flip-flops, sandals, and you know, and stuff like that. And then last minute on, um, I think it was on the Thursday. Yeah, it was on the Thursday afternoon. I was just going to pick up the boys from school and I thought, oh, I'll just have another quick look in the charity shop just to see if they've got any bags. And I had been in during that week as well. I just thought, oh, if they're on the off chance they've got anything, but they hadn't at, up to that point. But when I went in on that Thursday afternoon, I had a little rummage and I picked up this bag. It was so funny. I picked it up and I was like, oh, oh like that. And the lady kind of looked at me and I was like, it's just what I needed. <laughs> she kind of 
laughed at me, but it was again, just, you know, perfect. Um, and I think this was from Jones's, the bootmakers uh, shop originally. So yeah, I don't think that would have been a, a cheap one. It was a pound, a pound in my charity shop. What a bargain. Um, so I was over the moon with that. And it's quite, you know, generous in its size that I could fit a bit of makeup in there. I took two phones with me because I use my iPhone for taking photos and video footage and stuff like that. And then I have my normal everyday phone with me as well, my money and, and things like that. Yeah, so, oh, it was so good. It was a really, really, really nice evening. It was so lovely to catch up with all the other sewing vloggers who I follow and who follow me um, and that we've spoken over social media. And it was just so nice to get together and meet them in the flesh for the first time. Um, upon arrival when you get there you have a drink and you go into I don't know like a little area to mingle and have a chat with everybody so there was photos being taken and lots of chatter um, and then you go up the grand staircase that you know sweeps around to the left sweeps around to the right and then you go into the actual ballroom itself and the city rooms is where a lot of people have their wedding receptions and things like that so all the tables were laid out very similar to that sort of style and then you had the big band um, which is the Leicester University band and they were at one end and then there was a two course buffet meal that you went up and, and were served and that was at the other end of the ballroom and then they left enough space in between the tables to have the catwalk show. I'm just going to put this down. So I've just put that down and I've forgotten the Pierre de Resistance was this! <laughs> I, I don't know why, I had this in my head that I wanted to get a petticoat to wear underneath it and when I went to the ball in 2019 I remember there was a few people wearing petticoats underneath their dresses and I just thought oh I love that idea I, you know and then one of the girls at the time had said to me get them off eBay 10 pounds and I was like oh really you know and so I did have a little search on eBay but I didn't find anything that of the color that I wanted um, and then I went onto Amazon and I kind of had to roughly guess size and stuff but this one was just the perfect colour because it goes with the blues and the flowers um, and it was just the right length. I think this was a 26 inch length skirt. So obviously because I cut that 26 inches, I just pulled this up higher on my waist and it fitted absolutely fine. And I got the size, I think it was small to medium. And it said that was like roughly for a waist size of such and such and up to whatever. So that's worked really well. Andrew, if you're watching, I've got your hanger with your smelly beads. <laughs> she left it. Um, yeah, and this is only like two layers of tulle or whatever you call it. Um, and it's it's not too crispy and it's it's not too soft either. So it did work that it poofed out just the right amount, not not enough, you know, not uh, not too much, sorry, um, and not too little. So I can wear that dress absolutely fine without this underneath. Um, it's a bit more of an elegant style without the poof, I suppose. But for the actual ball, I just wanted this underneath. And I did have fun, you know, kicking my legs up and showing showing off the Betty goat underneath. Um, it was just such a fun night. So, yeah, like I said, they had the... Um, and I got that off Amazon, by the way. It cost like £7. Bargain. So they had the tables spread out enough so that there was enough room for the catwalk show. The only thing I will have to say is that... When they did start the catwalk show, I was on the one but last table to go up for the food. So we were still eating. So I felt a little bit rushed to eat my food because the catwalk was starting. I wanted to obviously give my full attention to those that were strutting their stuff down the catwalk section of the room. Um, and I'd also entered myself as well as experienced dress baker. And so I was like, ah, I've got to get up soon. Quick, let's get my pudding down my mouth. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, um, it was good to see everybody's creations. I mean, there were so many beautiful dresses, really, really was. Um, they had different categories. So I think there was best um, experienced dressmaker, best novice dressmaker, and you had to be sewing for less than two years to be in that category. Best accessory, best menswear, I think it was, uh, because there were a few men there as well. Um, I think that was the four categories. I can't think if there was any more, I'm not really sure. Um, but it, yeah, it was so nice to see everybody. So they kind of went up and down the ballroom and then there was a photographer there as well doing lots of um, just candid shots and things like that. So that was really nice. And those that did win, I'll insert a photo of those winners. They were well deserved, really, really well deserved. Um, yeah, and it was just nice. And then after that, we had the big band playing. So we got up in a, and you know, threw some shapes on the dance floor. And then after they had finished, there was Nicole, who was in one of the great British sewing bees um, series 
in the UK here um, and she did some DJing afterwards so she went up onto one of the balconies and did some DJing and I think it was more like sort of housey type music so yeah there was some funky moves taking place on the dance floor um yeah and that's why my feet were hurting by the end of the night um so it finished at 12 so we all just got our taxes home at that point um yeah it was a really good night and I didn't drink too much wine this time I was very very uh, reserved so it was nice actually because then the next day didn't have you know, a hangover at all. So we'd organised to go into town to a place called And Kitch, I think it is, or Kish, Kitch, oh, I don't know, I'll put it on the screen. Um, excuse me, it's on Granby Street in Leicester and we had some brunch there and met up with some of the other dressmakers and the organisers. Um, yeah, and just had brunch and a good old chat. It was just lovely, really, really lovely. Just a really nice self-indulgent weekend again. Um, the boys did come back, so they were here as well. So yeah, they were showing Angela everything, you know, it's like a trail of things come down the stairs that they just want to show her. So yeah, it was really nice. So I just want to say thank you to um, Sarah and Freya and Emma for organising um, the event. It was just an absolutely brilliant night. If you haven't ever attended, then I would highly recommend it. Um, and I'm really sorry to those that couldn't make it because I know there were some rail strikes. So I'm really, really sorry to those that couldn't make it. What an absolute bummer. Um, yeah. And then um, I just want to say thanks to Angela for coming up and staying with me for the weekend. I absolutely loved it. So I will return the favour and come and encroach on your family home <laughs> um, at some point in the future. So yeah, overall, a lovely, lovely weekend spent with lots of lovely people um, and just seeing all these lovely frocks. So I hope you like my dress. I am going to insert a little bit of video footage and um, photos and stuff at the end of this video. If you have any questions and you want to ask me about the dress at all, then feel free to do so. Put your comments in the comments section below and I will link everything in the description box below for you. I think that's everything that I've got to tell you all about my dress. Like I say, I will put it on so you can see it better on a future video when I do my makes videos um, because I've not done a makes video since I think July. I think it was July, maybe June um, because I haven't really made all that much actually since then because we had the summer holidays going through July um, and then August had still had the children off. So again, not as much sewing was taking place as usual. So I'll just share what I've done, I think. Yeah. Um, and that will be included. So you will get to see it on me in a video as well. Anyway, I shall insert that footage now. enjoyed that I did want to take a little bit more video footage and photos and stuff like that we managed to get a few before we went out of the house but my I ordered the taxi early thinking that it would be late and then it turned up on time I mean that never happens and then actually it was early picking us trying to pick us up and then it left and had to come back again because it couldn't find us so I was like oh my word anyway um so I hope you have enjoyed this video please do give me that all important like and subscribe if you've not already done so that would be lovely and I shall be back on your screens very soon so take care everybody bye